Hi friends, this is Chris with Josephine's Designs. I'm back today in our weekly prayer project. We're on week 28, page 82 and 83. So I want to say hi, good morning. I'm getting this up a day late. I didn't even get to post on my blog last night where I was. Yesterday was the last day of tax season. And I was on the road delivering, you know, different packages of, or different, you know, people's tax returns and, you know, there was just a lot that went on. And, um, anyways, I'm going to pray, get us started, and I'll tell you more about what happened yesterday, but it was a, it was a good day. It was a hard day, but it was a good day. So let's pray, let's get started, because this is an amazing week study and and then we we introduce the next week so let's let's go ahead and get started dear lord we bow before you this morning and we thank you so much for this day lord there's something about that early morning quietness that we're able to get up when it's still still and the sun's not quite up yet lord and we get to focus on you lord Lord, just help me wake up early every morning just to spend that time with you. Thank you, God, for this study. Thank you for everyone who's here. Thank you for this week's lesson. I knew all week this was going to be a meaty lesson. And, um, Lord, just let my words be your words. Let our thoughts be your thoughts. Help us to see what you want us to learn out of this week's lesson. And Lord, we just praise you for this time together. In Jesus' precious holy name I pray. Amen. Okay. So, April 15th, tax deadline. Husband's a CPA. We took over my dad's tax practice, which we've been trying to, like, you know, let it get smaller and smaller and smaller and work our way out of business, right? So, since this is a lot about community... This is why I'm going to share this. So, let's see. Sunday night, our pastor called because we couldn't get into San Antonio to church on Saturday. And and our and I should say our retired pastor called. Actually, he he texted it. He said, you know, hey guys, just wanted to let you know we've missed you, and you know, just oh, just precious, 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 precious person. And I'm I'm reading this text thinking. Oh, you know, the one thing I don't want us to ever do is put work before our day of, you know, rest and fellowship and, and our, and, and the Lord's day, Sabbath, right? Whether your Sabbath be Saturday, Sunday, Friday, whatever your day is. So, um, and our church meets on Saturday. And so anyways, just such a sweet encouragement and I was you know and I was saying you know I don't know if we're supposed to stay in this and you know spring is such a busy time on the property already and then now tax season on top of that and now a wedding ah, what are we doing you know kind of feeling like though I wasn't saying that to him that was what was racing through my mind and you know the first thing he said was you know it's a ministry for y'all and I was just like oh doggone it you can't put it in those words. And it is. When I went yesterday and I looked at these beautiful people's faces, and these are older people, all of them are old. All of our clients are older people except for one group. Actually, I think that, and then the half of another group. Because sometimes we get families, so we get all the children and their spouses. And you know how that works. So anyways. Um, but... I recognized, I, I, you know, we even got a thank you note back from one of our clients. And, you know, the amazing thing was, they, the first thing, when I saw them on, on I, I, I drove, uh, like all the San Antonio people area, I drove on Friday to deliver. So we delivered them early. And I met them in New Braunfels, if anybody knows where, you know, in Texas where that is. Anyways, um... And so this gentleman came in, and he was, like, talking about my dad, and, you know, and I, how much he missed my dad, and my eyes, like, teared up, you know, and I, 
I immediately like, you know, blinked my eyes and looked away and he just looked at me and he's like, I'm so sorry. And I said, no, I said, it's, it's totally fine. I mean, you know, and I think that's the part of the tax business that I didn't want to do anymore. I didn't want to go and because every single client, we talk about my parents, every single client every year. And I know in years to come, it will become less and less and less. But having to close out their estate right before the end of tax season was, it was monstrous. Why in the world this was the deadline for the estate? It should have been May 1st. But in reality, I'm glad it was April 1st because we have the wedding to plan. And so anyways, long story short, when my pastor said, but this may be your ministry. And I was like, it is. Because that, that gentleman I met... Um, he and his wife had been longtime friends of my parents, and I'd been hearing about them for, gosh, 30 years, literally 30 years, because his wife teaches in a uh, university, and my husband, I mean, my, my, my father kept saying, and daddy would say, you know, if you go back and finish up that master's, you could teach just like, the, you know, like this, this particular, you know, the wife of the gentleman I was meeting, and so we were talking about that on Friday, and, um, Anyways, it was just, you know, even as sad as it made me feel, and, and this gentleman didn't know my, you know, he didn't, he didn't know, and, and, um, he wrote a note to my husband immediately, and he said, you know, because my husband and he, they talk Spurs all the time, because he used to work for the Spurs, um, he, he, he said something to the effect of, she has so much life, and, or she's full of life, and I said, what? I'm exhausted. How could he say that? But I recognize that even in our weaknesses, God does make us strong. And even in our sadness, there is joy in the journey. I mean, I you know, I know these are like little like verses and cliches that I'm putting kind of together, but it is true. When we keep our mind on him and on things above, he does give us what we need to get through situations. So I've like taken two verses and a cliche and put them all together there if you've caught that. But the community of being with believers is huge because it took my pastor saying this to me on Sunday night for me to hear this is a ministry. So when I met this gentleman on Friday, the first thing he asked me, was I said, oh, well, we still go to church in San Antonio because he lives in San Antonio. His family lives in San Antonio. And he said, oh, well, did you go to this church? And I said, well, funny enough, um, no, not now, but years ago, yes, and I worked for that church. And he was like, you're kidding me. And he said, well, it just seems like every Christian I ever meet, they go to that church. <laughs> I said, well, I went to that church when we were still growing it, you know, and it was still, it wasn't, now it's a mega church. And, um, and I'm going to tie this back into this lesson, guys. But anyway, so long story short, he began, you know, and so when he sent us thank you note, he sent us, because we had um, put a little note in his package and, you know, wished his family well because they have two weddings and a baby being born and just a nonstop summer. We thought we were busy. They are way busy. Um, anyways he thanked us and he and he sent us a thank you par, pardon me I kind of had a stuffy nose this morning sorry um he sent us a thank you to say something to the effect of you know you're good people god bless you and i know the gentleman was not a christian and i know that my husband has been sharing christ with him because you know like i said they text all the time when it comes to the spurs so it's just been an interesting journey. And then when I went yesterday and I met with those other clients, they were so happy to see me. And I was just like, why would they be happy to see me? I'm bringing them their tax return. And I think part of it is, yes, it's done. They have it. Whew, relief. But even if it's bad news, I find that people, I don't know. I just think there's something there. And my husband has said for years, you know, we need a ministry. We need a ministry. And I think for the first time ever, because of my pastor saying that, maybe this is our ministry. I mean, I don't know yet. We're still praying this through. But, I mean, setting up my husband's office will be fantastic. Getting all this junk out of my house will be fantastic. <laughs> Building a little bridge across the office in the craft cottage 
<clears throat> pardon me, with a ramp will be fantastic. Um, all these things work together. So as we get ready to read this, I want to share, I wanted to preface all of that with being in a community of believers helps us in our walk. So let's get started. And let's, and I'm going to even circle back to some of this. So <clears throat> pardon me, excuse me. I'm, it's first morning. It's good. I'm just, you know, anyways. So week 28, confess and pray. Confess your, fin con Ugh. okay, we'll start over here. Confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. James 5, 16, English Standard Version. So when you confess your sins to someone, the Bible clearly says that you receive healing. Though confession isn't easy and maybe you've been burned in the past, accountability helps you grow. So those are really good words. Accountability helps you grow. Let me say it one more time. Accountability helps you grow. So, I love the book of James. It's one of my favorite books. It was the one in high school that it just floated my boat. I went through a very difficult time in my childhood and youth. And um, being a Christian, I really was kind of on my own. I mean, I, I did go to church in Sunday school, but it was a big church. And it wasn't until I got plugged into a youth group um, in high school that I discovered James, um, and I began James, and just it lit my fire for for you know as a Christian, and um, and but it just means a lot to me. So when we say confess your sins to one another and pray for one another, that is huge, and that you will be healed. That is true. I cannot tell you how many times I have had friends call me and say, you know, I've been praying for you for this one thing, and I'm like. You've got to be kidding me. And like we literally had a friend who prayed for us to find a healthier way to eat. And she was a vegetarian. So she prayed for us to become a vegetarian. I mean, I adore her. And in some ways she eats healthier than us. In some ways we eat healthier than her. So you know how that kind of works out. It's so hilarious. But, um, and I know that we don't eat perfectly. But um, the change has probably been one of the best things we've ever done. But she prayed for us. And I didn't know she was praying for that. I mean, it just kind of cracks me up. And not only that, she and her husband were praying for us. I know. Anyways, the prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. So, that is true. When we adopted our youngest daughter, a friend of mine prayed specifically. And she prayed in her card. She drew a heart and she had it woven together you know, like that. And she prayed that God would weave our hearts together with our daughter before we ever got there. Out of 13 families, our daughter immediately clicked with us. Without it, people were just like, what in the world have you done? It clicked so quickly. I mean, she cried the first two hours, and I told her, you cry. It's not fair. You have been, we were her fifth, in theory, home. And I just, you know, I knew. And I knew she knew us because she went straight for us. Um, but just the confusion of all the babies and all the things that were going on. But she, she cried for two hours. I cried with her. And I think when she saw me crying, it was like she knew she could trust us. And after that, she was perfectly happy. She never cried anymore except for one other time when we got back to San Antonio and I put her down for a nap, and she cried. And she was a baby. I mean, you know, of course, she cried. And, you know, and I stood there, you know, and I was trying to comfort her and encourage her. And anyways, and she would call us by her, the Chinese names that the nanny had taught her. You know, Mama Gigi Bobo, Bobo Gugu. You know, I mean, and it was just um, Mama Bobo Gigi. I think brother was Gugu. Anyways. She would just say that over and over. And um, it was really amazing. But God had knit our hearts together so much that when once we had her in China and there were other families that were struggling, they came to me to ask for help. Um, our guide came to me <laughs> and asked for help. And I was just like, this is what you do. <laughs> you know? But it was, it was the prayer of a righteous woman 
of a Titus II woman in my life who had prayed specifically that our hearts would have been joined. So, that scripture is amazingly true. Again, I like James. Let's keep going. <laughs> Do you live in a community with other Christians where you feel close enough to confess sin and pray? If not, what's holding you back? So, when I brought up the gentleman who asked us if we went to a certain church in San Antonio, that church we were heavily invested in. I was helping redo their whole children's program. I was, um, I, they wanted to hire me and I said no because they wanted to pay for our children to go to private school so I would go to work for them. And I, you know, we prayed about it and I said no, God called us to homeschool our children but you have me for as much as you can have me. And, um, I don't want to go into all the, the issues within that church, but the church took a turn in doctrine. And because I was in leadership, so many people kept coming to me and asking me, you know, what do you think of this? And so we had a friend whose dad was a pastor and, and very, very good family friend. And we immediately, you know, we went to the Word. We went to our pastor. We went to the Word. We went to um, leadership within the church, um, and then we went back to my friend's past, my friend's dad, who was a pastor, and he was so great. He said, "I'm not going to tell you what to do," he said, "but I'm going to I'm going to point you in some directions." So he pointed us first to scripture. The first thing he said was, "Get in the Word," and you know, I'm going to point you to some a little bit of scripture, but you're going to have to dig out the rest. Hands down, best advice I've ever heard. Then next, he said, I want you to read a book. I'm not going to get into the specifics because I don't want to step on anybody's toes doctrinally in any way. Um, but this book very much, you know, let us know what was going on. And, but I mean, that was way down the list. That was not top of the list. That was the bottom of the list. And then we went in love to our pastor and said, hey, we can't see any scriptural basis for this at all and knowing the roots of the church this church really did take a, well I, I went to the right a real left turn and anyways it was so impacting that one of the the ladies who was kind of a Titus two woman in the church really a woman who knew God's word called me and began to defend this teaching and then began to say well let's agree to disagree and my husband was very, very dogmatic at that time. <clears throat> Still a very outspoken person. But he said, we, you know, he came back and we talked about this discussion that she'd had. And I mean, it was really impacting because if I couldn't back this particular teaching, then I couldn't be in leadership. And I knew that because I knew the church was, was, was going down this path. And it was very scriptural. You could hear like... You know, deacons, deacons and their wives, and the wives would... It, it was just a complete split. I mean, I could literally sit in front of them in church and hear them disagreeing. I mean, it was ripping families in two, and we could... I mean, we could see it. And um, anyways, um, so in that church, the pastor wanted us to be essentially fired. I mean, and we weren't like... We were teaching Sunday school. We were training people to take over our Sunday school. I was heading up <clears throat> different parts, you know, different programs in the church, and I had been slowly stepping down through this process. And they hired someone to take my place, and there had been a struggle there because she thought I was trying to get, you know, that I was, I don't know, she thought I was being naughty or something. And then she came to me and she goes, I finally figured out you weren't. You were completely supporting me. And I said, yeah, I was trying to get out of your way so that people would come to you and not to me. And because of that, because of that, that almost like discussion, communication, when this event happened and the pastor wanted us fired, she said no. He wanted her to fire us. I mean, you know, seriously, <laughs> we were already almost off the door. But, you know, but we had obligations that we had to close out. And um, anyways, um, so... The thing that was amazing, when that pastor wanted that, his wife stopped him 
because everybody was in tears except for us because we knew God was in control of what was happening and that pastor's wife went to him and said let me tell you something if that is what you believe needs to happen then you have to make it happen you can't ask these other people to do it I barely I didn't know this but this is the like the first pastor's wife that I barely knew because it was such a big church I mean I knew the youth minister's wife and the youth minister I knew that you know the education ministers minister and minister's wife and I mean I we knew everybody I mean I had keys to the church you know I mean it was just and this was my last time to have keys to a church too God had really taken us down a different path so when we left that church because we did leave because and we left quietly we were when we we finished our Sunday school class that we were teaching and we went to church because our pastor asked us to give it one more time he blessed his heart blasted us from the pulpit <laughs> <laughs> not by name but he looked right at us and we knew what he was saying um we quietly finished the service we went and picked up our kids and we walked out the door and we knew that God was saying it is finished you've gone back in you've trained the people to take over your place the, the role of um children's director I was had passed off the Sunday school class that was a really big Sunday school class that we had trained most of the Sunday school teachers in, you know, in the children's ministry through had been passed off. And the interesting thing was that everyone we had passed everything off to, we said nothing. And they all came to the door for Sunday school class crying. And it was like, guys, it's all good. And God is in control. And our goal right now is to take care of these children. So we need to show them the joy of the Lord. And it was really, you know, we hugged everyone. But it was one of those, like, moments where you live in a community with Christians where you feel close enough to confess and pray, confess sin and pray. If not, what's holding you back? <clears throat> Once we got through that particular church, it was very difficult for us to step back into church and trust again. It was very difficult. It has not been until now that our that we've had a pastor to say like we've missed you and I know that for most of you you think oh come on but it's true because we would then go into churches and sit in the back row and sit quietly and we would serve quietly in different ways in different ministries and different you know and so um, that for this pastor to literally call me Sunday and say but this may be your ministry this is where you're ministering. I was just like, oh, <laughs> no truer words. So, it's a lot of words, a lot of storytelling to tell you that is true. Living in a community of believers with other Christians where you feel close enough to confess your, confess your sins and pray is huge. It is just huge. Because I had to tell the pastor, but I'm so tired of doing and seeing all my parents stuff and you know and he was so sweet and he was just like I totally get it and he's an older gentleman I adore his wife his wife was right there with them and you know we we're on the phone and we're an hour and a half from them I mean why would he notice that we're not there you know we just started coming back <sighs> because it's a community of believers and we are a part of the body of Christ that's what scripture tells us. Let's press on. Have you been hurt in the past? And that's why I wanted to preface that with that. Have you been hurt in the past by people in your church or in your inner circle? Yes, clearly. You can hear that. What were the circumstances? I've shared that already. Write out a prayer and asking God to heal your heart, freeing you to live closer in closer community with others. I agree. Um, I agree. I mean, there's... there's um, uh, another group that we have been very involved in for the last two three years and when we were going through so much you know losing daddy and having to take care of my parents and dealing with the logistics of that and being an hour away and then dealing with my mom and then the loss of her and we had naughty caregivers in there and they were really controlling my dad and so it was not working well and though my dad in the end knew who was there and who wasn't there, um, you know, for him, um, 
I remember watching the leader in this situation, in this Christian group, um, who, who was the leader, who should have been, who was in leadership, take a really very nonchalant stance through this. And I mean, it was gut-wrenching, guys. It was really a difficult time. And um, because you want the best for your parents, they're being brainwashed that they're getting the best, and they're not. They weren't. I mean, we clearly found all that out afterwards. It was very, very telling. And um, anyways, long story short, um, and, and there was a lot of good lessons in that. I mean, they weren't being abused by any men, but they were financially being abused. That we did find out, too, as well. And I had to talk to my siblings about that in the last couple of weeks, and that wasn't easy either. But um, anyways, so having, you know, gone through what we've gone through and then having this leader in our Christian, you know, local Christian group, um, because we get a church far away, we have a local group too. Um, and now they're going through something very difficult with her dad who has, you know, Alzheimer's. I'm watching her need tremendous amount of support and tremendous, like, I literally get, I'm not kidding, many, well, I'm not even going to go there, but I get many, many contacts a day for prayer, specific prayer, and they need it, hands down. But when we were going through those things, it wasn't always as seen the same way. And that, I could be bitter about that, I could be angry about that, and I'm not going to lie, there are times where I thought, hey... <laughs> remember when <laughs> but I also realize now it's not about me it's about her dad now and we need to pray for that you know we need to pray and so that is my focus but that's what it is when you're in a community of believers no one's perfect well, I'm not perfect I put foot in mouth every day I mean I you know I, I who am I to say how dare they um, when I am just as guilty at times. Not meaning to be, but it ends up being that way sometimes. So, I just want to say this to you guys. Being in a community of believers is a blessing beyond all words. Understanding that there are going to be bumps along the way, it happens. There is no perfect church on earth. There is no perfect church. There is no perfect friendship. There is no perfect, you know, Bible study, community, whatever it is that you're, you know, some, I, I think they have like fam, uh, circles, uh, what do they call them? Uh, you have like a group that your church is a part, you know, circle groups or, you know, people have in their churches, they have like at home groups sometimes that meet for Bible study. There is no perfect group. We're just all working to grow and know the Lord and serve him better. And some of us do it with our feet in our mouth, like me, and some of us are just a little bit more eloquent at it. That's what I pray for me, to be a little bit more eloquent at it. So, anyways, I hope, I know this was a lot of personal with you guys, but I wanted to share those things with you because we have been through such a rocky road in the life of the church. And because there are reasons why we wouldn't go to church in our community, there was, there was literally abuse in a church here that we could not be a part of. So, anyways, but, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let y'all go because I'm almost out of time here on my camera, but I want you guys to see that we're going to start um, the next part, which is about faith, faith and prayer. Think about that, our prayer life and growing our faith. So, um, I'm going to come back and introduce this in a little bit. So, there'll be two parts this week um, because I don't want to skip out on anything of this particular book. I don't know about y'all, but isn't this a good book? I know. Let me pray. Let me let you go. Let me let you go throughout your day. Um, I pray you guys are getting something out of this. I pray that the Lord is touching your heart. I cannot enough share how much I appreciate this Bible study. So let's pray. Dear Lord, we bow before you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this study. And I'm so sorry for being long-winded today. I pray that my words were your words and they would be encouraging to our group. Lord, we thank you for all that you're doing. In Jesus' precious holy name I pray. Amen. Okay, my sweet friends, come back. I'll introduce the next part.